Hello, class. Good to see you again. Did you miss me? Sorry, I was really busy, but I'll try to do my best to post on a regular basis. Everybody, welcome to American English File, second edition, book three, part 2B, Changing Lives. Great. Part one, listening. Everyone, first, look at the photos. Where do you think they were taken? What can you see in each photo? What do you see? And here are some words. Holiday, British English for vacation. Lorry, British English for truck. And headmaster, British English for principal. All right, what do you think? Speak with your friends. I'll be waiting. A few minutes later. Great. That was a very good discussion. Now, everyone, you are going to listen to an interview with Jane talking about a trip she took in 2008. A trip in 2008. Listen to part one. Where did she go and what did she decide to do after the trip? Okay, let's listen and find out. Shall we? 1.45 Part 1 Jane, you're an elementary school teacher and a writer. What kind of books do you write? Well, I write books for children who are learning English as a foreign language. How long have you been a writer? Hmm, let me see, since 1990. So for about 22 years. Tell us about the trip that changed your life. Where were you going? Well, it was in the summer of 2008, and my family, my husband and I and our three children, decided to have a holiday of a lifetime and to go to Africa. We went to Uganda and Rwanda to see the mountain gorillas. It was something we'd always wanted to do. Anyway, about halfway through the trip, we were in Uganda, and we were traveling in a lorry, when the lorry broke down. So the driver had to find a mechanic to come and help fix it. And then what happened? Well, as soon as we stopped, lots of children appeared and surrounded us. I could see some long buildings quite near, so I asked the children what they were. And they said in English, that's our school. And I was very curious to see what a Ugandan school was like. So I asked them to show it to me. What was it like? I was shocked when I first saw it. The walls were falling down, the blackboards were broken, and there weren't many desks. But the children were so friendly, and I asked them if they would like to learn a song in English. They said yes, and I started teaching them some songs, like Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes, a song I've used all over the world to teach children parts of the body. Almost immediately, the classroom filled up with children of all ages, and they all wanted to learn. I was just amazed by how quickly they learned the song. Did you meet the teachers? Yes, we did, and the headmaster too. He explained that the school was called St. Joseph's, and it was a community school for orphans, very poor children, and refugees. I asked him what the school needed. I thought that he might say, we need books or paper, and then later we could send them to him. But actually, he said, what we need is a new school. And I thought, yes, of course, he's right. These children deserve to have better conditions than this to learn in. So when I got back home, my husband and I, and other people who were with us on the trip, decided to set up an organization to get money to build a new school. All right, very good. Now, check your answers with your friends. Yes, she went to Africa, to Uganda and Rwanda. After the trip, she decided to set up an organization to get money to build a new school. Very good. Now, we're not done. I need you to listen again. What does Jane say about, number one, her normal job, number two, the vacation to Uganda, Number three, what happened when the lorry broke down? Number four, the condition of the school. Number five, the children. And number six, what the headmaster asked her for. 
Okay, you know the drill. 1.45 Part 1 Jane, you're an elementary school teacher and a writer. What kind of books do you write? Well, I write books for children who are learning English as a foreign language. How long have you been a writer? Hmm, let me see, since 1990. So, for about 22 years. Tell us about the trip that changed your life. Where were you going? Well, it was in the summer of 2008, and my family, my husband and I and our three children, decided to have a holiday of a lifetime and to go to Africa. We went to Uganda and Rwanda to see the mountain gorillas. It was something we'd always wanted to do. Anyway, about halfway through the trip, we were in Uganda and we were travelling in a lorry when the lorry broke down. So the driver had to find a mechanic to come and help fix it. And then what happened? Well, as soon as we stopped, lots of children appeared and surrounded us. I could see some long buildings quite near, so I asked the children what they were, and they said in English, that's our school. And I was very curious to see what a Ugandan school was like, so I asked them to show it to me. What was it like? I was shocked when I first saw it. The walls were falling down, the blackboards were broken, and there weren't many desks. But the children were so friendly, and I asked them if they would like to learn a song in English. They said yes, and I started teaching them some songs, like Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes, a song I've used all over the world to teach children parts of the body. Almost immediately, the classroom filled up with children of all ages, and they all wanted to learn. I was just amazed by how quickly they learned the song. Did you meet the teachers? Yes, we did, and the headmaster too. He explained that the school was called St Joseph's, and it was a community school for orphans, very poor children and refugees. I asked him what the school needed. I thought that he might say, we need books or paper, and then later we could send them to him. But actually, he said, what we need is a new school. And I thought, yes, of course, he's right. These children deserve to have better conditions than this to learn in. So when I got back home, my husband and I, and other people who were with us on the trip, decided to set up an organization to get money to build a new school. Right? Great? It was easy, wasn't it? Now, check your answers with your friends. Number one, what is the answer? She is an elementary school teacher and a writer. Number two, she went to Uganda in 2008 with her family to see the gorillas. Number three, what happened when the lorry broke down? Lots of children appeared. They wanted to show Jane their school. Next one, number four, it was in a very bad condition, the school falling down, blackboards broken, not many desks. All right. And the children, the children were very friendly. They were all different ages and they all wanted to learn the song, head, shoulders, knees and toes. They learned it very quickly. And all the way to number six, what the headmaster asked her for. Okay, what did he ask? All right, the headmaster told him about the school, St. Joseph's, a school for poor children, orphans and refugees. When Jane asked him what he needed, he said that they needed a new school. So it was far beyond that. They needed a new school, not books, not, you know, desks. All right, great. Now listen to part two. Correct the wrong information in these sentences. I'm going to give you some time. Read the sentences first. Very good. Very nice. Now I need you to listen and you know what to do. Correct the wrong information. Let's do it. 1.46 Part 2 So Adelante, Africa was born. Why did you decide to call it that? Well, we wanted a name that gave the idea of Africa moving forward. 
And my husband is Spanish, and he suggested Adelante Africa because in Spanish, Adelante means go forward. And Adelante Africa sort of sounded better than go forward Africa. How long did it take to raise the money for the new school? Amazingly enough, not long really, only about two years. The school opened on the 14th of March 2010 with 75 children. Today it has nearly 500 children. That's great. I understand that since the new school opened, you've been working on other projects for these children. Yes. When we opened the school, we realized that although the children now had a beautiful new school, they couldn't really make much progress because they were suffering from malnutrition malaria, things like that. So we've been working to improve their diet and health. And at the moment, we're building a house where children who don't have families can live. And are your children involved in Adelante Africa too? Yes, absolutely. They all go out to Uganda at least once a year. My daughter Tessie runs the Facebook page and my other daughter Anna runs a project to help children to go to secondary school. And Georgie, my son, organizes a football tournament there every year. And how do you think you have most changed the children's lives? I think the school has changed the children's lives because it has given them hope. People from outside came and listened to them and cared about them. But it's not only the children whose lives have changed. Adelante Africa has also changed me and my family. We have been very lucky in life. I feel that life has given me a lot. Now I want to give something back. But it's not all giving. I feel that I get more from them than I give. I love being there. I love their smiles and how they have such a strong sense of community. And I love feeling that my family and the other members of Adelante Africa are accepted as part of that community. And do you have a website? Yes, we do. It's www.adelanteafrica.com. We've had the website for about four years. It was one of the first things we set up. If you'd like to find out more about Adelante Africa, please go there and have a look. There are lots of photos and even a video my son took of me teaching the children to sing on that very first day. Maybe it will change your life too. Who knows? Great! Now I need you to check your answers with your friends and compare your answers. Okay, if you're ready, we can check it together. Number one, Jane's son chose the name Adelante Africa, which means go forward Africa in Spanish. Okay, actually Jane's husband chose the name. Number two, the new school opened in 2012. The new school opened in 2010. Number three, today the school has 75 children. Let's check it. The school has almost 500 children. Number four, Adelanta Africa has also been trying to improve the children's English. Let's check it. Adelanta Africa has also been trying to improve the children's diet and health. Number five. They are building a home for the teachers. Okay, what is this one? They are building a house for the children who don't have families. Number six, two of Jane's children have been helping in Uganda or Uganda, right? All three of Jane's children have been helping. Number seven, Jane says the school has changed children's lives because it has given them an education. Okay. The school has changed children's lives because it has given them hope. Hope is a good thing. Number eight. Jane thinks that she gives more than she gets. Actually, Jane thinks that she gets more than she gives. You have to be a giver in life. And all the way to number nine. The website has a video Jane's daughter took of her teaching the children. Actually, Jane's son took the video of her teaching the children. And one last thing that I want to ask you. 
Do you know anybody like Jane who does a lot of work for a charity or for example has a charity organization in your country? What do they do? Explain it to your friends. This is your turn. And maybe one day you become the helping hand. You have your own charity and you help people to have better lives. Who knows? Be the value. Great. That was a very good story about the helping hand. Now, everybody, part two, grammar. Present perfect plus for or since and present perfect continuous. A. Match the questions and answers. Okay, take your time. A, B, C, one, two, three. Do it. Very good. Well done. Let's check it. How long has Jane been a writer? B. For about 22 years. Number two. How long has Adelante Africa had a website? C. For four years. And number three, how long has she been working for Adelante Africa? A. Since 2008. Now, the first question, let's do it together. Are the three questions and answers in A about a period of time in the past, a period of time from the past until now, or a period of time in the present? Just check it. Of course, a period of time from the past until now. And number two, what's the difference in form, the format between the first two questions and question three? Okay, take your time. Let me help you. Present perfect, has been, has had. These are the examples. So auxiliary have plus past participle. This one is easy. But present perfect continuous. Look, has been working. That's an example. Auxiliary have plus pin plus verb plus ing. All right, you may think, oh, what is this? I don't understand. Okay, follow me. Everybody, just listen. 1.47 They've known each other for 10 years. Julia has had that bag since she was in college. How long have you worked here? Since 1996. How long has your brother had his motorcycle? For about a year. Very good. Now, everybody, this is present perfect. We use the present perfect plus for or since with non-action verbs. For example, like, have, know, etc. To talk about something that started in the past and is true still until now. Right? I will give you an example. They have known each other for 10 years. They met 10 years ago. The action happened in the past and it continues all the way until today. Another point, we use how long plus present perfect to ask about an unfinished period of time. From the past until now. For example, how long have you worked here since 1996? Or how long has your brother had his motorcycle for about a year? Another point, we use for plus a period of time. For example, for two weeks or since plus a point of time. For example, since 1990. Now look at the timeline. We have three times. Look, past, now, and future. Yeah? So present perfect simple is like this. I have lived here for two years. Started two years ago and continues until now i guess it's clear for you now what what it is don't use the simple present with for or since for example they know each other for a long time no 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 no. just present perfect there's more follow me now it gets challenging everybody just listen as always 1.48 1 how long have you been learning English? Nick has been working here since April. They've been going out together for about three years. Two. Your eyes are red. Have you been crying? No. I've been cutting onions. Hmm. 
a great example. Now, everybody, we use the present perfect continuous with for and since with action verbs. For example, learn, work, go, etc. Or to talk about actions that started in the past and are still true now. Don't use the present continuous with for or since. For example, I am working here for two years. No, it doesn't happen that way. So as you can see, the concept is the same. Something happened in the past and continued until now. Number two, we can also use the present perfect continuous for continuous or repeated actions that have been happening very recently. The actions have usually just finished. Okay. I've been working here for two years. You've been working here for two years or he has been working here for two years and so on and so forth. The negative, I haven't been working here for two years or he hasn't been working here for two years. And for questions, you simply flip it. Look, have you been working here for two years? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Has she been working here for two years? Yes, she has. No, she hasn't. All right, work and live. Work and live are often used in either or either present perfect or present perfect continuous with the same meaning. I, I've lived here since 1980. I've been living here since 1980. Now let's practice together. No worries, I've got your back. I will explain the difference. Let's go. Great, you're here. Everybody, as always, I have two exercises for you. A. Correct the mistakes. B. Make sentences with the present perfect or present perfect continuous. And for or since, if necessary. Use the present perfect continuous if possible. All right, as always, this is your gig. Stop the video, take your time and do it yourself. Just you. Very good. Now check your answers with your friends, put your heads together, get better together. Very good. Let's do it by me. All right. Number one, we've had our new apartment since four, since six months. Nah, we've had our new apartment for six months. Number two. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I don't see you for ages. No, you should say hi, Jackie. How are you? I haven't seen you for ages. Number three. All right. What is the right answer? How long have you known your husband? Number four. Emily has been a volunteer for 10 years. Not 10 years ago. You have to cross out ago. Next one. Paul hasn't eaten anything since yesterday because he's sick. Number six. It hasn't rained for two months. Number seven. They've had their dog since they got married. Number eight. How long have your parents been married? Number nine. I haven't gotten any emails from my brother since last winter. And the last one. My grandmother has lived in the same house all her life. Great. Now the challenge comes. Exercise B. Number one. We have known each other since we were children. Number two. The children have been playing computer games for two hours. Number three. Has your sister had that hairstyle for a long time? Number four. I've loved her since the first day we met. Number five. My internet connection has be hasn't been working since yesterday. Number six. How long have you been waiting? Number seven, I've been a teacher for three years. Number eight, it's been snowing since five o'clock this morning. And the next one, number nine, Sam hasn't been studying enough recently. And let's finish it, the last one. Have you been living in Chicago for a long time? And that's all there is to it. You never cease to amaze me. Let's Part go. three, pronunciation sentence stress everyone i need you to listen once 
just once and try to write down the stressed words in the large pink rectangles. Okay, so listen and write the sentences. Let's do it. 1.49 1. One. How long have you been learning French? 2. I've been learning French for three years. 3. How long has it been raining? 4. It's been raining since lunchtime. 5. How long have you been waiting? 6. I've been waiting for half an hour. Great! You did great! Now everybody, look at the stressed words and try to remember what the unstressed words are. Okay, and then listen again to check it and write them in. Okay, you can do it later. And also you can listen again and repeat the sentences to get the rhythm. Now, everybody, part D, a different story. I need you to listen and make questions. Okay? 1.50 1. One. It's snowing. Okay. Make the question. How long? How long has it been snowing? You got it. Two. Make questions. I'm learning Korean. How long have you been learning Korean? Three. Natalia has been working in Brazil. How long has Natalia been working in Brazil? Four. John is looking for a job. How long has John been looking for a job? Five. They're living with Mary's parents. How long have they been living with Mary's parents? Six. I'm going to salsa classes. How long have you been going to salsa classes? Seven. It's raining. How long has it been raining? Eight. Justin is going out with Brittany. How long has Justin been going out with Brittany? Great! Now these are the answers. Check them. How long has it been snowing? How long have you been learning Korean? How long has Natalia been working in Brazil? How long has John been looking for a job? How long have they been living with Mary's parents? How long have you been going to salsa classes? How long has it been raining? And how long has Justin been going out with Brittany? And that's all there is to it. Great! Part 4. Speaking. Now it's your turn to use what you learn. Everybody, look at the circles and write something in as many as you can. Alright? For each part. A social ne networking site you use regularly. Or for example, a friend you know very well. Write as many items as you can. Very good. Now, compare circles with a partner. Ask your partner at least three questions about the things he or she has written. One question must be, how long have you, for example. Let me give you the exercise. For example, how long have you been using Twitter? For about a year. Do you write things on it or do you just read other people's tweets? Or for example, why did you buy a Nissan Juke? Because it's small and it's very green. How long have you had it? All right. So try to speak to your partner and share your ideas and try to use the question, how long have you? It's your turn. All the way to part five, reading and listening. Everyone in your country, 
are there charity events to raise money for a good cause for a good reason have you ever taken part in one what did you do how much money did you raise for example where i live turkey there are two organizations ahbab and afad and of course during the earthquake in south turkey they raised lots of money for the people who were affected by this bad disaster and we respect them for it all right i need you to speak to your friends and share your ideas let's go great now everyone you're going to read an article about helen skelton who agreed to kayak down the amazon for charity read the introduction and answer the questions there are four questions all right you know the drill it's your turn i'm gonna wait for you read and answer the questions a few moments later great you're back tv hosts amazon challenge everyone helen skelton hopes to become the first woman to kayak down the amazon river helen skelton is a 26 year old tv host of blue peter a show for young people she has never been afraid of a challenge last year she became the second woman to complete the 78 mile ultra marathon in namibia running the three consecutive marathons in 23 hours and 15 minutes but when blue star decided to do something to raise money for the charity sports relief which sponsors projects around the world skelton said that she wanted an even bigger challenge so they suggested that she kayak 1998 miles down the amazon from nata in peru to almerium in brazil this is a very risky trip there are no roads and no towns only rainforests and the river which is sometimes more than 24 miles wide and infested with crocodiles if she gets sick it will take around 11 hours to fly her to a hospital Helen has only been kayaking once before in her life, so she has been training four hours a day. Last week, she arrived at the Amazon in Peru. After two days of kayaking, she made the first of her phone calls. All right, very good. What are your answers? Number one, what did Helen do last year for charity? She ran the 78-mile ultra marathon in Namibia or she you can say she ran three consecutive marathons number two what is she hoping to do this year to kayak 1998 miles down the amazon from nata in peru to almerium in brazil number three what is dangerous about the trip of course the river is full of crocodiles she will be a long way from civilization so if something happens to her, it will take a long time to get to a hospital. And the last one, what experience does she have? She has only been kayaking once before, so she has no experience. All right, this seems interesting. As you can see, she has made one, two, three phone calls so far. I need you to read the phone calls and fill in the blanks with the correct word. You can choose A, B, or C for each question. All right, now I need you to listen and check. Let's do it. 1.51 Phone call 1 Everything went wrong. I only managed half a day on Wednesday, the first day, and on Thursday we started late, so I'm already behind. I've been suffering from the heat. It's absolutely boiling and the humidity is a hundred percent at lunchtime. I went the wrong way and I had to paddle against the current. I was exhausted. They asked me, do you want to give up? But I said no, because I've also been having a wonderful time. There are pink dolphins, pink, not grey, that come close to the boat. I think that if I can do 62 miles a day, then I can make it. Phone call 2 I've been on the Amazon for a week now, and I've been paddling for six out of the seven days. 
The river is incredibly wide and it's very hard to paddle in a straight line. The water is so brown that I can't see my paddle once it goes under the surface. It looks like melted chocolate. I start at 5.30 in the morning and I paddle for at least 10 hours from 5.30 a.m. until dark with only a short break for lunch. My hands have been giving me problems. I have big blisters. I now have them bandaged in white tape. I'm usually on the water for at least 10 hours. It's boring at times and exciting at others. I listen to music on my iPod. I've been listening to Don't Stop Me Now by Queen to inspire me. Phone call three. I haven't been feeling very well this week. The problem is heat exhaustion. They say it's because I haven't been drinking enough water. I've been travelling 62 miles a day, which is my target. But yesterday, after 52 miles, I was feeling sick and my head was aching and I had to stop and rest. All right, great. Now I need you to listen to the rest of the Helen's trip down the Amazon. Did she manage to finish it? Yes or no? Again, it's your turn. 1.52 Phone call 4 I haven't had any music for the last three days because my iPod broke. So, paddling has been getting more boring. To pass the time, I count or I name countries in my head. And sometimes, I just look up at the sky. Sometimes the sky is pink with clouds that look like cotton. And other times it's dark like the smoke from a fire and sometimes it's bright blue. The day that I reached the halfway point in my trip, the sky was bright blue. I'm superstitious, so I didn't celebrate. There's still a very long way to go. Phone call five. This week, the mosquitoes have been driving me crazy. They obviously think I'm easy food. They especially like my feet. I wake up in the night when they bite me and I can't stop scratching my feet. But I'm feeling happier now than I've been feeling for weeks. I've seen a lot of amazing wildlife this week. One day, I found myself in the middle of a group of dolphins. There were about six pairs jumping out of the water. I've also seen enormous butterflies, iguanas and vultures that fly above me in big groups. Yesterday, a fish jumped into my kayak. Maybe it means I'm going to be lucky. I'm starting to feel a little sad that this adventure is coming to an end. And finally in the news, TV host Helen Skelton has successfully completed her 1,998-mile trip down the Amazon River in a kayak. She left from Nauta in Peru six weeks ago on a trip that many people said would be impossible. But yesterday she crossed the finish line at Almerin in Brazil to become the first woman to paddle down the Amazon. Here's Helen. It's been hard, but I've had an amazing time. The only thing I've really missed is my dog Barney. So the first thing I'm going to do will be to pick him up and take him for a nice long walk. Right, great. And I like these people with determination, with sheer will. Nothing can stop them. And you should be the same. Yes, she finished the trip. Now, I need you to listen again and answer the questions. Phone call four, phone call five, and the news. All right, you know the drill. 1.52 Phone call four. I haven't had any music for the last three days because my iPod broke, so paddling has been getting more boring. To pass the time, I count or I name countries in my head, and sometimes I just look up at the sky. Sometimes the sky is pink with clouds that look like cotton, and other times it's dark like the smoke from a fire, and sometimes it's bright blue. The day that I reached the halfway point in my trip, the sky was bright blue. 
I'm superstitious, so I didn't celebrate. There's still a very long way to go. Phone call five. This week, the mosquitoes have been driving me crazy. They obviously think I'm easy food. They especially like my feet. I wake up in the night when they bite me, and I can't stop scratching my feet. But I'm feeling happier now than I've been feeling for weeks. I've seen a lot of amazing wildlife this week. One day, I found myself in the middle of a group of dolphins. There were about six pairs jumping out of the water. I've also seen enormous butterflies, iguanas, and vultures that fly above me in big groups. Yesterday, a fish jumped into my kayak. Maybe it means I'm going to be lucky. I'm starting to feel a little sad that this adventure is coming to an end. And finally, in the news, TV host Helen Skelton has successfully completed her 1,998-mile trip down the Amazon River in a kayak. She left from Nauta in Peru six weeks ago on a trip that many people said would be impossible. But yesterday, she crossed the finish line at Almerin in Brazil to become the first woman to paddle down the Amazon. Here's Helen. It's been hard, but I've had an amazing time. The only thing I've really missed is my dog Barney. So the first thing I'm going to do will be to pick him up and take him for a nice long walk. All right. Great. Check your answers with your friends. Number one, why hasn't she had any music for three days? Because her iPod broke. Number two, what does she do to pass the time? She counts or names countries in her head, and sometimes she just looks up at the sky. Number three, why didn't she celebrate reaching the halfway point? Well, because she's superstitious. Number four. What have been driving her crazy this week? All right, mosquitoes. Number five. What life, wildlife has she seen? Dolphins, enormous butterflies, iguanas, and vultures. And number six. Why is she starting to feel a little sad? Because her adventure is coming to an end. All right. Number seven. How many miles did she do all together? 1,998 miles. How long did the trip take? Six weeks. Number nine. What did Helen miss? Her dog. Number ten. What is the first thing she's going to do when she gets home? She's going to take her dog for a long walk. All right. Great. Now, tell your partner about an adventure sport you've done or an exciting experience you've had. Was it a positive experience? Why or why not? How did you feel? You know the drill. It's time to speak with your friends. Share your experiences. Be the light. Great. Looks like nothing can stop you. Part six, vocabulary and pronunciation. Everybody, strong adjectives. Some adjectives have a strong meaning. For example, I had to paddle against the current. I was exhausted, very tired, exhausted. I've had a fantastic time, a very good time. With strong adjectives, you can use absolutely or really, but not very. Remember, not very. I've been suffering from the heat. It's absolutely boiling, not very boiling. All right, now I need you to complete the sentences with a regular adjective. For example, was Lisa's father angry about the car? Yes, he was furious. Yeah? Very good. Take your time. I'm gonna wait for you. Do it yourself. Three days later. Great, you're back. Now, I need you to listen and check. Let's do it. 1.53 1. Was Lisa's father angry about the car? Yes, he was furious. 2. Is Oliver's apartment small? Yes, it's really tiny. 
Just a bedroom and a living room. 3. Are you afraid of flying? Yes, I'm terrified. I never fly anywhere. 4. Was the food good? Yes, it was delicious. 5. Are you very hungry? I'm starving. I haven't eaten all day. 6. Is your parents' house big? It's enormous. It has seven bedrooms. 7. Was it cold in Moscow? It was freezing. Minus 20 degrees. 8. Was Jack's kitchen dirty? It was filthy. It took us three hours to clean it. 9. Are your parents happy about the wedding? They're excited. In fact, they want to pay for everything. 10. Was the movie funny? It was hilarious. We laughed all the way through. 11. Are you sure you locked the door? I'm positive. I remember turning the key. 12. Were you surprised to hear that Ted is getting married? I was absolutely amazed. I never thought it would happen. Awesome. But we're not done. Everybody, ask and answer with a partner. Ask for more information. Number one, have you ever been swimming in a place where the water was absolutely freezing? Two, is there anything that makes you furious about car drivers or bike riders in your country? Oh, especially Turkey, if you know what I mean. Number three, are there any animals or insects that you're terrified of? Number four, what's the most delicious meal you have had recently? And number five, is there a comedian or a comedy series on TV in your country that you think is absolutely hilarious? Very good. I need you to speak with your friends. Let's go. And this is the last set in the house. Everybody, an informal email. Marisol went to the US, United States of America and stayed for six months with a couple, Angela and Matt, working as an au pair. After going back to Peru, she sent them an email. Look at the list of things she says in her email. Number them in a logical order, one to six. Okay, this is your gig. Read the email and number them. It's time for me to wait. Tomorrow. Great, you're back. Check your answers with your friends. Okay, let's start. Number one, she apologizes for not writing before. Number two, she thanks them for her stay and says how much she enjoyed it. Okay, number three, she talks about the nice things that happened when she was with them. Number four, she talks about what she has been doing recently. Number five, she promises to send some photos. And number six, she thanks them again and invites them to stay. Very good, but we're not done yet. Great. Now, I need you to correct eight mistakes in the email. Grammar, vocabulary, punctuation, and spelling. Again, it's your turn to read and do it. Great, you're back again. Now, let's do it together. Hi, Angela. I'm really sorry for not writing sooner, but... I am very busy since... No, I've been very busy since I got back. Thanks for a wonderful six months. I love being in Colorado and I had a great time. I also think my English... Okay, this has to be capital E. Got a little better. Don't you think? Don't, apostrophe. It was so nice to take care of Austin and Melissa. I thought they were adorable, and I think we had a fantastic time together. I have really good memories. For example, our travel to Denver. Travel is a verb. Our trip to Denver. And the amusing amusement park there. I've been a little stressed these last few weeks because I've started working at a restaurant while I look for a full-time job. 
be a waitress no being a waitress is very hard work but i can now afford to rent an apartment with sophia and two other friends and i'm saving for to buy a car i'm saving to buy a car i also spent a lot of time with my family my brothers have changed so much over the past six months all right i've had several messages all right we have a spelling mistake here from Austin and Melissa since I've been back. Please tell them from me that I miss them and that I'll send them some photos very soon. That's all for now. Thanks again for everything. And I hope you know you're welcome in Lima anytime. My family would love to meet you. Summer here is usually beautiful. Hope to hear from you soon. Give my regards to Matt. Best wishes, Marisol. P.S. I've attached a photo I took of me with the kids. I hope you like it. Great email. Now, everybody, imagine you have some American friends in the US and you stayed with them for a week last month. Write an email to say thank you. Plan what you're going to say. Use one to six in A and the useful language box to help you. Also, check your email for mistakes like grammar, vocabulary, punctuation, and spelling. Now check it out. Useful language, informal emails, beginnings, hi plus the name or dear plus the name if you want to be a little more formal. Sorry for not writing sooner, but, and in the end, look, thank you. Thanks so much for your letter, for having me to stay, etc. It was great to hear from you. Endings, look, that's all for now. Hope to hear from you soon. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Give my regards, love to. Best wishes, love from. And P.S. When you want to add a short message at the end of an email, I've attached a photo, for example. Very good. And that's the episode for today. Thank you for watching my channel. Everybody, as always, if you have a question, you can comment down below and I will get back to you. And I'm really sorry for delays or if I upload late in late times. Uh, I'm really busy. I have lots of students and I have to teach so many people on a daily basis. But I will try my best to upload every day. Anyway, remember, your purpose comes first. Are you on your purpose? I want to see your greatness. See ya.